Hi, and welcome to Lucid Art Gallery. This is Carrie Fuller. Um, I am the CEO and art director. And today I am presenting um, one of this fabulous artists. Her name is Laura. And um, we met on Fine Art America. I have a community there where I get to interact with a lot of great artists. And this is my first interview that I like to promote and feature and I just give some kudos and some, you know, just <laughs> I admire your work kind of uh, feedback and give the artist the opportunity just to basically tell them about the world about themselves, um, display some of their art and their technique, and really just give them a chance to vocalize whatever is on their mind at the time. So um, this is uh, Lucid Art Gallery, and this is our interview process with artists around the world. And this is Laura, and I'd like to just say hi and thank you again for being my first um, participant in this oh, hi, presentation. Carrie. Yeah. Oh, I'm so honored to be here and thrilled that you've, uh, you've you've asked me. So so this is fabulous, and I can't thank you enough for supporting the arts and artists, and uh, it, it's just a wonderful opportunity. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Absolutely, thank you very much. And thank you for taking this time and setting up everything in the background and just, you know, <laughs> all the preliminaries that we did together earlier this month. I just, I really greatly appreciate like the start. It's a good start for me. So, and I hope this is going to be expansive for you. Your CV is amazing. I thank will you. display that later in the, the show. Um, but let's just talk a little bit more about you. Who are you? and tell us a little bit about your style. Tell us anything that you'd like us to know about you as a, a person as an, and as an artist. All right. Well, um, I was born and raised in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Uh, I understand this is recording in, in Maryland. And um, I got creative a number of years ago. I've always been creative. Uh, with living in, in, in Toronto, I had the opportunity to, to regularly visit downtown Chinatown as a, as a child with my parents. I just fell in love with the culture, the colors, the food, most of the smells, and um, everything in between. But, but I was really, really fascinated with the artwork. My father had purchased an antique tea wagon for my mother as a gift and on it was Chinese brush painting and that was my first true exposure to the art form. I hadn't seen anything like that before and that was at a time, and I'm dating myself, when as a child I didn't think I'd be able to fly to China ever in my life, let, like, let alone afford it or any, anything like that. So, so for me it was truly a way to connect with another culture and it was interesting. That's amazing, yeah. yeah. Just to connect with something that's outside of your norm and actually to yeah. experience it in all different types of sensory, it's something oh, yes. that's gonna stick with you. And I think it did because it's expressed in a lot of your work and um, it's in a passion that I can see, so. Oh, thank you. Well, uh, I ended up uh, many, many years ago, I worked for the president of Honda Canada. And, and at that time, globally, it just, you just didn't see a non-Japanese person working for a Japanese executive because of the communication barriers, number one. Um, but I was fortunate with the, the gentleman that I worked for, he wanted to learn about Canada, Canadians, and uh, my, a great deal of my job was teaching him about the Canadian culture, which is very young you know, compared with Japan. And, uh, and they taught me so much about the Japanese culture. And it was a win-win for everyone. It, it was a blast, it was a blast. So I've been exposed to Asian cultures quite a bit over my lifetime. And, in, and I have um, a rare disease and it creates a lot of pain. I've had 10 major surgeries so far and I don't know what's to come. But what I have managed to do is I marry Eastern and Western medicine. I work with the head of a major department at Mount Sinai Hospital, downtown Toronto. And I also work with a traditional Chinese doctor. 
and the two of them, they work together. And it, you know what? It's heaven. And I am infinitely healthier, better. I have more balance in my life. I can manage pain both with traditional and and, and Western medicines. I prefer the traditional because there aren't any drugs involved. It's kind of interesting and it's a little wonky at times, but you know, you just go with the flow and do whatever works. And that's what they both say. Do what works for you to keep you healthy uh, on all levels, mentally, physically, et cetera, especially when you manage chronic pain, because boy, that can be a real downer. That's very true. And I like how you harmonize the balance, the, the need for balance, um, mm-hmm. which it, it just like, it's very healing. Um, balance is like secure and it just it it settles your soul in a way and then everything else kind of comes together um, physically and mentally and emotionally and I not a lot can can cope with or can actually do that marriage of two different cultures sometimes it takes that adaptation to um, try to do something new that's out of the norm, but you gracefully combine the both and to your benefit. And you. that's just like <laughs> amazing. <laughs> well, well I think you create, why do you create your works? Uh, I create for a number of reasons. Um, if I don't create, I find I go a little ringy. <laughs> it's, a, it's an outlet right? It's a creative outlet. And, and, and I do my art because if I didn't, my creativity then lends itself to cooking. And I'd be like the size of a house, literally. If, 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 so I, I, I art, I I do art to control my eating, one might say, but also it feeds my soul. It, it enables me to, to develop, get out those negative feelings as a result of pain, uh, difficult times post-surgeries. There is one instance where um, in 2011, uh, I was home from a major surgery. I was wallowing in self-pity, woe is me, all that sort of thing. I turned on the TV and there was a tsunami in Japan that had wiped out the uh, Fukushima nuclear center. And you look at the sheer devastation and then you think, you know what, my life doesn't suck. Yeah, what, what, what if I was in the same physical situation I was in at that moment, but happened to be located in Japan, in Fukushima, I'd have been toast. So, so you know, it, it helps put things in context. It really does. And then I went and I, and I created a painting. Uh, it was a traditional Japanese style painting. And I made it as happy and positive as possible. And I presented it to the Japanese, uh, Canadian Japanese uh, Cultural Center as a thank you because it just lets them know others are thinking of them and supporting them in their time of need. And I just think the world needs to do that because we all need help and assistance at some point, right? Yeah, support, um, motivation, inspiration, mm-hmm. and you know those those stars and those the shimmers of light in those bleak moments are very important. Yeah. So, and, the be- and the beauty is you don't have to show anybody your bleak paintings. The ones where they're so dark, you're looking for that speck of light. You don't have to show anybody that art. And that's true. perfect. And uh, not so much with the Chinese brush painting that I do. With acrylics, it's a no-brainer. You paint over it. But we have both of those to display in a little bit. But yes. tell us a little bit about the process. Um, how do you um, manage your creative process? It's very much, for me, it goes back to cooking. It's like if, you, if anyone goes into a grocery store uh, that's really keen on cooking, and, and I look for inspiration, it's like, what am I going to cook today? What am I going to cook this week? I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. It's like, so you either make it fun because you have to do it, right? So, so you put a positive spin on it. But then I look for that particular ingredient that inspires me, that sparks my imagination. I will find an herb, a spice, a vegetable, a fruit, a piece of food, somehow, some way, if it's in the grocery store, it's game. It can be coconut milk. And it's like, okay, what am I going to make around that? And I build a menu around that ingredient. And, and that's what I do with my art. I will be inspired by something, a conversation, a meeting, um, a tsunami. Uh, and I will start there and then I will start building in layers until I get to what I, where I want to be with that painting. That's true. 
it's like something external becomes internal and then it becomes mm -hmm. external again. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a process. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any um, thing to show us about like some of your papers or any kind of the textures or any? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Uh, there are many different types of rice papers and a lot of people aren't aware of that. Mm -hmm. They're very transparent. Uh, they're very delicate. It can be like painting on toilet paper at times it feels like <laughs> or or a paper towel if you're lucky so what I have is I have just your your average like this like you can hear right your basic price paper if I were to take a spray bottle and spray it you'd see my hand yeah and so, so so you see the transparency and quite frequently I'm painting when it's that wet I'm painting on it wow and so you have to be very, and as you can see is really easy. <laughs> I'm telling you, nails are not your friend with this art form. Nails are not your friend. Absolutely. And then, so you create this masterpiece, and then you get what's called mounted. But in the traditional Chinese sense, Asian, uh, Japanese sense, these are master artists that do this. It's a 27-step process, and where they soak your art. They glue it to another piece of rice paper on a board, vertically or a wall, and then they take a handmade brush and they brush it all out, they soak it again, and they let it dry and they cut it down. Well, watching this will put you into cardiac failure, guaranteed, oh. <laughs> I never watch. Uh, I don't do it myself because as I say, it is an art form, and I've just known too many people that have tried it and they've just ruined their artwork totally. There are other methods of doing it, but there's an advantage to the wet mount. This has the first stage of, of, of a wet mount. Now this painting I'm not happy with, but it's just for example, and if you can hear, it, it, it's kind of stiff, right? right? But it started off like on this paper. So it's layered. So this is after the first mounting. Uh -huh. uh, it's layered. And then what, what I'm going to do is I will adjust this painting because I had it wet mounted then, I can have this soaked all over again because I'm a masochist. And they peel off this top layer of rice paper, then they remount it. And they go through that 27 step process. But every time you go through this soaking, it does degrade the, the, the quality of the color, the brightness of the color. So you have to paint and adjust and accommodate for that, for this process. And then, and then what happens, so I will do that again. I will touch this up, have it remounted, which many people aren't fond of having to remount. I'm just gonna say it's not their favorite thing to do. And this is a painting that I recently had done, but then I had it mounted onto canvas, a gallery canvas. And it's, um, I don't know if you can see that okay. Yeah. Now what happens, with the rice papers, if they were on the regular, this type thing, after years, they can become unstable. You usually have to wait a month before I put anything like this under glass because it can become unstable. And what that means is it can bubble. If it wasn't properly mounted, air gaps can get in. And then if you see a crease on the painting, it's ruined by Chinese standards and it's ruined. Um, uh, you'll see on here, I have my, let me just get this up here, right here. That's my, my seal. That has my name on it. There are rules for applying your seal. I use a chop. Um, you have to have, it has to be the right size. It has to be in the right location. You have to sign your name in Chinese. Uh, calligraphy above it. If it's English for North Americans, which I, I do now, I will put my English name, but it has to go below below the chop, so below the seal, so, and then you have different seals that you can use depending on the painting. So there are rules for everything. So I can go through this massive process, okay, all these stages of mounting, remounting, whatever, with my masterpiece and have it ruined uh, by either using the wrong chop in the wrong place, wrong, uh, I've used them upside down in error, backwards in error. So they're ruined. The paintings are ruined. Wow. So so there's a lot of stress. Devastating. This. Yeah. And so when, when people say, how long does it take you to paint your painting? I'm going there. Uh, gee, let me think. <laughs> um, 
to get from here to the final stage, it's massive. It's massive. Wow. And, uh, and that's Chinese brush painting. Acrylics, mixed media, they're great. If you don't like it, you paint over it, you sand it down, or you or or if you want to get if you've used paste on your on your canvas it's easy you just use a spray it with a mold remover leave it on for a couple of days and scrape it off and then bob's your uncle you're doing it again wow that's a and i didn't realize how intensive and like careful you have to be yeah. with art form so yeah yeah the, what's what inspires you to create like go through this process it's very um, detailed, it's very mm -hmm. disciplined. What inspires mm -hmm. you to continue this form? I, I, this is the aspect of the Asian culture that I absolutely respect and love. In order to do it, I always meditate before, practice my breathing, get my breathing calm, get my mind, I have to be in a zone. Mm -hmm. and, and if that zone gets broken, then I'm really irate. Like I, I'm not pleasant, I must say. Uh, I'm not a happy camper. Uh, I get in my zone, I meditate. Um, because it is disciplined, I'm going through all of this. I'm not thinking about pain, upcoming surgeries, agonies. I'm not thinking about a family member that may be in distress or in need. It is me totally blocking out the world so that I can then re-enter the world and be a much better human being as a result. I'm calmer, clearer. You just see things differently. And your inspiration is just to be with yourself and experience yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and, and it was interesting because uh, at one show I exhibited, uh, I had done a painting called Butterfly Lovers. I don't have that here. Um, but I it was a young you. Asian okay do you want me to save the story for that or yeah let's save the story that's actually okay. the picture I have okay play. so you kind of did talk about how you manage your emotions through meditation mm -hmm. you know through like mm -hmm. a process and just getting with yourself yes so I think we can actually go like since we brought up the butterfly lovers and I love the story of that <laughs> I'm gonna do a screen share and we can talk about the first five, these are the first five that are some of your earlier works. And I see one behind mm -hmm. you um, near a mountain is like in the center. But we're going to switch over and we're oh, gonna, yeah, like yeah, that one. I love that one. We're going to switch over and you can just take as much time as you want. Talk about each painting, inspiration All right. behind it, what um, feedback you got, anything you really want. So okay. let's do the screen share. Thank you. And the photos. Share. Can you see it? Ah, uh, I'm just waiting. Oh, there it is. There it is. Butterfly lovers. Yeah. Um, this is this is done with a Japanese technique called sumanagashi. And that's the background. And then you may want to say I threw in some butterflies. However, um, given the techniques and the technical aspects of it, there is a lot to this painting. It's based on a similar tales Romeo and Juliet about two star-crossed lovers. This is literally, there's an opera, concerto, oh, it's such gorgeous music. That's actually how I discovered the tale about uh, butterfly lovers, actually, as I discovered the music first. And, and, but this is the final scene and, and, you know, Sorry to give away the ending, but the two star-crossed lovers, uh, they meet, one has died, the other is still alive, uh, the bride is still alive, and she crosses over a bridge, she sees the cemetery where her true love has been buried, and there are all these gusts of wind and crawling leaves and all sorts of things going on with, with in nature, and the door to the uh, tomb flies open and he comes out as a butterfly at the same time she transforms into a butterfly and they fly off together and that is butterfly lovers very yeah. romantic story right i told that to my husband he said yeah but butterflies die after three weeks oh wow yeah. <laughs> um, i'll never forget that conversation and so when i look at this like that's the complete story of this painting and then uh, I happen to be exhibiting this, and, and when I exhibit some of my art, I do have about the painting articles. 
um, if people are interested. And, and one such case, there was a young uh, Chinese man. He was a father. He had his young son, about four. He was reading the story. And, and, and the father was born in Toronto, by the way. Uh, it's relevant to the story because he read the story and he looked at me and he explained it to his young son. And he looked at me with tears in his eyes and thanked me for reintroducing him to his culture. He said, I'd forgotten about this and my parents never speak of China. And this is a part of my culture that, that has value. I said, absolutely. And, and he just couldn't, he just thanked me profusely. And, and you know, so, so for me, that, that has such a wonderful meaning, such value uh, on so many levels in terms of con giving back to, to a community that, that has given me so much. That story is touching how you influence someone to come back to their culture. And when I first saw this painting, yeah. I immediately thought butterflies as a spirit animal, almost like all of their metamorphoses and how they transition. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they do have a short lifespan, but they're, they're yeah. very, it's very rich. It's, yes. it's, it's never a moment without anything exciting going on. And the beautiful mm -hmm. thing about their painting is the yellow and like the mm -hmm. sort of like the top yellow, the top left pulls in with the, mm -hmm. the subtle yellow in the second butterfly. And then this like lavender purple is just like lilac almost. And it's, it's powerful and gentle. And it's almost like um, the yellow butterfly is sucking in the other like negativity, that that, that mm -hmm. stream of like grace yes. and the the floor like bringing into the other butterfly to him, mm -hmm. um, and you can almost see like in the very bottom a bridge for my yes. eyes in the purple where it's it's almost like a hilly road, very mm -hmm. winding and mm -hmm. it's very beautiful. I love this. I love this one. <laughs> Thank you. And, but, the story, and of course. Well, and, and the colors of the bright yellow and, and a bright purple, uh, royal purple, uh, are colors that were only worn by the emperors. Wow. So they're, they're, yeah, they're, 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 yeah, there are a lot of cultural significances. And it also enables me to teach non-Asian people about the art form and the significance of art and to maybe look at it beyond the initial viewing to look behind the scenes and the culture and then ask questions. And it really is a great topic for discussions. Uh, I use this a lot for my artist talks. Yeah, it's a beautiful painting. Elegant, strong. Thank you. And then I see your signature, which is, it's very uh, unique. On the um, yes, that actually, uh, the two columns on the left mean uh, butterfly lovers. Mm -hmm. The technical translation is flying away together, but wow. it's inferred that it, if they're flying away together, they're not parting, they're going to be together forever. And, uh, and they are lovers. So that's, that's what that means. And uh, so, yes, the title is Butterfly Lovers, and that is the, the calligraphy for butterfly lovers. The column on the, um, on the right-hand side, uh, that is my name, and it is deliberately smaller than the title of the painting. And that's just following the rules of calligraphy and a painting. Wow. Very beautiful. Thank you. Let's go to the next one if you're ready. All right. You fire away. <laughs> this one. Ah, yes. This was a recent commission. Uh, and, and when I do commissions, I let people name the painting as long as it's everything's above board, shall we say. Um, so they get to name the painting uh, as a result of this, and, and it hadn't been named. So as a working title, I call this Canada, comma, A. So because Canadians are always saying A. So um, you can't get more Canadian, I feel, than having Canada geese, a moose, and a lot of Christmas trees and a lot of snow. And again, this background is, is the Japanese form of Sumanagashi. And I do control the inks for these backgrounds as well. They're not 
just random. I do control them. It's a skill set unto itself. And um, so, so this was, uh, and this I started August of last year. Uh, I got approached about it and, and the woman was thrilled. She had a very busy schedule. We worked through it and the concepts and what she liked and based on some other pieces of work that I'd done. And so I said, okay. And I finally, I was really busy. So I said, I can't start it till January. That was fine with her. January, 2020. I, I just pour everything into it. I get this done. I'm ready to deliver it to her on March 12th. And in Toronto, in Ontario, March 12th is when everything kind of shut down. <laughs> So I couldn't deliver it. So I, I only just delivered it to her in early July when, when it was safe to do so. And it was fascinating. So it, it was an interesting process. Uh, this is, has so many different meeting, meanings in, in, in that, it yes, it's Canadian. I remember COVID for sure when it started. This is my starting point. And, you know, but, uh, and she was absolutely thrilled. Now this piece is, two and a half feet by four feet. Wow. So it was big, it was big. Yeah. And, it, and, and, but it was, yeah, it was fun to do. And, and, and it, and it was, and, and it fit the room she was putting it in. So I made sure that the, but as I explained to her, I didn't want the art to compete with what she already had in the room. Everything should be complimentary. And yes, I wanted the art to pop more than anything else in the room. <laughs> But she still she still had to meet an aesthetic, a design aesthetic, and that's what we were going for. This painting, it gives me the chill of winter, mm -hmm. but I don't feel like it's um, like a brutal winter. It's like we were talking about the pandemic and how it hit, and we're going to talk mm -hmm. a little bit more about that too. And yes, mm -hmm. it's stirring up, like you can see the geese and. The, the winds are moving, but it's like almost like we have this under control and I'm still going yeah. to be as firm and as, mm -hmm. as as stable as possible. Like the trees themselves are still very, very uh, upright. And yes. it's like holding all the weight of the snow. And it looks like they can take a little bit more actually. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the moose yeah. is distant by itself, but just peering off and kind of just great, like just doing his thing. And I love this. It's a lot of movement in this painting. A lot of movement. Yeah. And the and with this art form in particular, it's all about control. But you don't always it doesn't always look like there's been control applied. Everything is controlled. Everything and every brush stroke, everything. Wow. It, it, so so yes, when I I actually at one point because of the amount of control with this art form, I, I took an acrylics class and the first time I did it, I, uh, the art instructor, she knew what I was aiming for and, and she said, no, Laura, you can't paint within the line. And, and she took my brush and she started painting outside the line. I said, you're painting outside the line. You're not supposed to do that. It's supposed to be controlled. And she cracked up laughing. She said, no, no, get with the program. This is different. <laughs> you know, loosen up, loosen up. And yeah. so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So even this is for type of personalities. <laughs> you've harmonized controlled artwork versus just for free. Yes. You're very good at balancing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're very good at balancing. That's, that's, thank you. Well, th well, that's what makes an excellent art painting, uh, our Chinese brush painting, is the balance. If you don't have the appropriate balance or chi in a painting, it's useless. It's It would be an embarrassment to, to exhibit it. The, there's a lot of pride in this art form and and there are a lot of do's and don'ts so there are a lot of rules and it just yeah keeps you on track wow i can see that let's yeah. move to the next one if you're okay. ready uh, i'm ready okay ah dancing dancing skies, skies number number three wow um this one, uh, I, was, um, I was invited to exhibit in China uh, by Chinese representatives. Uh, the invitation came in 2017. I actually made the trip in 2018. 
uh, it was a multi-city tour. I, I exhibited just northeast of Beijing and in a city of, or village of Beijing. It's a million people and it's a village. the home of the Emperor's Summer Palace. And the significance of that is there are more master artists per capita in that village than there is anywhere else in China. Mm. So to exhibit there was critical, I found, for my career in North America, to be accepted in North America with this art form. Also to be invited, it eliminated any and all issues of cultural appropriation. Because what they found is a representative happened to see one of, I think it was uh, this painting or another one um, that's coming up in a studio that had been mounted and was still stuck on a wall somewhere. And long story short, he tracked me down, said, yeah, we want your work in China because you're doing something so totally different that we've never seen before. And you're doing it with inks. And so for me, I, I honored the Chinese and the Japanese cultures. I can definitely paint in their styles. And, I, and when I exhibit it, I show that artwork every time to prove I can, but to also prove that it's not cultural appropriation. Um, I do Canadian themes and, because I am Canadian and that's why I got invited over there. They were so supportive. They loved this painting. I did this painting for that trip and they were so enamored with it. Um, this one is in permanent collection. The Chinese government owns the art. They own it for 202 years. There's a numerical significance to that number. Don't ask me what it is, but the, the, but the two twos add up to four and fours are very very good fortune right in the Chinese culture so um, but they loved this they loved the movement and and they to them they said they wish they could see the aurora borealis but for them they would never be able to see it they would never be able to travel to China but they loved what I was doing with it and they said we want to encourage you to continue doing this and that's why and this painting just holds such a special place in my heart because of that. I love this painting and the story mm -hmm. behind it makes it even more amazing. And when I first see this, first there's the distinct between the, the color and the black mm -hmm. and white. And then, you, yes, you do see the Aurora Borealis. And I can see like from bottom left to top right, the trees, mm -hmm. it's almost like a landscape. Mm -hmm. But then you can go from the bottom right to the top left, and it's just like you're looking straight into the universe. Mm -hmm. um, there's it's just like looking straight into the sky, and that balance is amazing. And the colors are Thank you. so subtle, and like you can get lost in this painting. And this the transition, like right in the middle midpoint, it's it's you can see where it goes from land to sky. Um, mm -hmm. And it does dance. It's a happy okay. dance. <laughs> it is. And, and what they liked about this uh, painting, they loved my trees because those are, it's an Asian way of painting trees, number one. And that's not easy to do either. I ended I had a lot of blobs to begin with. Let's put it that way, we think. Um, but uh, when I first started painting, but uh, they loved that with my, with my Chinese painting, uh, all of them have, an Asian uh, influence. There, there are elements of Asian art in all of them. And, and that's what they really, really adored. You marry it very well. You, Thank you. You combine them very, very well, very elegantly. Thank you. Yeah, I love this one. <laughs> one, two more, and then we can start talking about like current events. And all right. Then we can start talking about some of the newer. All right. Um, art, creations that you made. All right. This is. Mm. <laughs> yes, the, these I did for China as well. Um, this, this is to me is a funny story. This is the, the one with the plane is called the commute. The one on the left, I believe that's home away from home. Uh, home, away from home. Canadians love their cottages. They love their cottages. Um, you can't get more Canadian than a cottage, a deck, and a beer. So anyway, um, at, at, one, at one point, um, I had dealings with a lawyer in uh, downtown Toronto. 
Uh, we were in a social environment. Uh, he was also my lawyer at the time. Uh, he said, anybody want to go for a flight out of the downtown Toronto airport? It's, all, it's, it's just off the Toronto Island. And I said, you know, that sounds like it'd be a lot of fun. He, long story short, he kept there that he would fly and he needed to maintain his hours. And he said, oh, and, oh if you want to ride, you got to chip in a hundred dollars for gas. And he said, and I can hold five people on it. And I said, well, I said, hundred dollars is very cheap. Don't get me wrong for a scenic tour of Toronto, which I grew up in and I know the scenery quite well. Thank you very much. Uh, but I said, why'd you get a plane? He said, oh, he said, I was tired of the, uh, the, uh, the traffic on the way to my cottage. So he said, I bought the plane. I learned how to fly, bought the plane. And then I just fly it out to the airport. And then I just keep a car there at the airport and I take the car over to the cottage. And I looked at him and I said, well, I guess I'm paying you too much, aren't I? <laughs> so that's, yeah. that, that, believe it or not, that's what was on my mind. Uh, at the time, I, I saw the plane and it reminded me, I saw a plane in, 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 a, in a magazine driving by airports. And I'm thinking, I remember that guy. I remember him. And so that's how these paintings evolved. And again, I took these to China. And when the, the story got translated over there, they said, yeah, we have the same problem with lawyers over here too. <laughs> <laughs> they just want to get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they charge too much. Um, yeah. yeah, but anyway. I love this. That was uh, immediately the sky, always the sky. I see uh -huh. just so vast and I love stars and it just uh -huh. seems like you capture as many as possible. Like it's, if it's the I purest do. sky with no light pollution, you uh -huh. can it. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, the plane, it's still often as distance, like you still have a little bit of a hike to get to your cottage. Oh, yeah. It does, does sound like after you land, you have to still travel to get to your cottage, but you do the vastness, the, the distance mm -hmm. is much is shortened and mm -hmm. the cottage itself it's so humble um mm -hmm. still covered in snow mm -hmm. but it's like it, a sanctuary almost like i yeah something that wouldn't stop me from getting there yes and, um i love this it, and i love how it's split um but it's together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah thank you <laughs> you're welcome all right Let's see. And this is the one that is directly centered behind you. Ah, uh, um, yes. Near a mountain. mountain. Okay. This painting, if, if you'll recall uh, my story about being every ha have it, having everything wet mounted, right? Mm -hmm. and, and how paintings can become unstable within the first month uh, of being mounted. This is a, a classic case. This painting became unstable. It, bubbled, it ripped. There was absolutely nothing I could do to salvage it. It was ruined. I've never exhibited the original because it was ruined. Mm -hmm. I was able to have the image of it. So what I did with the image is I have it printed uh, um, through a professional printer. Um, uh, I do acrylic prints with it. So they're glossy. They're shiny. They are just absolutely gorgeous and it just adds another element to it. And it's a way to make, it's a way to, to work with an image and it's a way to show this piece. I love this piece and it kills me that I've never been able to exhibit the original. Yeah, I but love it too. For an artist's talk, I will take the, and it was a big one. It was um, three feet by four feet-ish. So, so there was a lot of time involved. And and but again if, when i go to an artist talk i will take this piece so that people can actually see the damage and and what i'm talking about and they can see it up close and personal so it gives them a better view but yeah i love i love this painting i love the reflection of the boat the flag uh the flags the uh, you can tell i'm not a sailor right uh, the sails in the water and, and the reflection of the mountain i had somebody say they wanted to go to this place and and they wanted to see it and i said well I don't paint from photographs. Everything is out of out of my imagination. Everything. That's beautiful. <laughs> um, there are only two times where I've painted from photos, and, but there was a reason. There was a learning reason. What I was doing was so absolutely technical 
that I needed that reference to keep me on track because the, the technical aspect was just so difficult and that's what I needed to focus on to master a technique. That's where I will do that. That's understandable. You're, yeah. You have a creative mind, a vivid imagination. Do you dream? Do you have dreams? Do you every dream? night. Every night. <laughs> Multiple. <laughs> and, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, they, you know, they're, you know, I could give Stephen King a run for his money sometimes, I think. <laughs> and, and other times, you know, it's like, you know, yeah, I'm a poet. But no, it's, it's everything in between, like everybody else, right? That's like very people. true. Yeah. yeah. So let's transition into the last three. And, All right. Um, then we can talk a little bit about the pandemic and All right. you are supporting and creating and just thriving during this time. This All next right. one is called Eye in the Sky, my favorite. I have <laughs> eyes that you can see. I have a thing about yes. eyes, well, the eyes and the irises. And I think we talked a little bit about this, like how I yes. love our last meeting. I just love it. Um, I'm going to hold up my teacup. You can see it, it's plaid. I have a, a Scottish background, Scottish heritage. Um, and, and when I was in China, I saw so many things. I saw so many things that alarmed me in the sense of surveillance. And I thought, wait a minute, it's not just China. It's my own country as well. Um, so many cameras, so many people watching. Uh, there's nothing that's truly private anymore. And then you know, fast forward, I happened to be in a liquor store because I was curious and, and to see, see what their stock was. And, and I was shocked at the, at the range of scotches. Now, I love scotch. Surprise. And um, so, but they had such a vast selection that um, they'd only sell this to certain people. You had to have the, the right authorization, I guess. I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, we had very interesting conversations about scotch. And then, but when I got home, a lot of, a lot of the emotions that I, that I felt while in China, a lot of the, the, the positive things, so many positive things I felt, I wanted to put on, into art. I wanted to translate that, but I didn't feel Chinese brush painting was the right medium. I found through mixed media, I was able to just let loose, going back to that very first lesson in acrylics that I had, I had to learn how to paint outside the lines. I just started creating, and this is what evolved. And so I call it Eye in the Sky, S-K-Y-E. No, Eye in the Sky because Isle of the Sky is in Northern Scotland. And it's a, it's a place that I've always wanted to visit. I promised my grandfather who was Scottish that I would go there one day and spend a lot of time in the pubs. I've yet to do that. It's on my bucket list. But anyway, this is what evolved. And, and it's funny enough, it's very close to the uh, Clan Tartan for my family. I love it, it. It's just how it turned out. But yeah, so so it's a little bit, you know, I had a great time uh, uh, and and it was um, it was a wonderful memory, but also it really got me thinking about the surveillance in Canada and the cameras in Canada and the loss of privacy everywhere, the loss of privacy. And, and it's like, it, this one really got me thinking about privacy on a global level. That's very true. And I've noticed too, now I can look up something and I'll get feedback on all my devices. Oh. And hey, do you want some more of that? <laughs> no, I was just like looking up a word or something. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. It's like whatever eyeball wants, you know, it's going to focus on. And yeah. when you were talking, I was thinking about how we balance together. Like this is a point where you're freeing yourself from those technical skill sets. Uh -huh. And that's what I do mostly, just like let everything out, um, just no, no, no restrictions. But mm -hmm. now um, I'm also transitioning into more technical, more very, very precise and prestigious techniques. So as we're balancing off of each other, it's just like I think every artist kind of goes to those transitions where they have restrictions and then they mm -hmm. have no restrictions and then they can transition into different mediums. Um, mm -hmm. And just really explore themselves and what they can express so 
and honestly, I just love this color. It's just something about purples and blues and yellows. Mm -hmm. I have been recently, it used to be um, oranges and greens and, and yellows, but now it's like these purples and blues. And um, it's like, I can see in that top right, I'm always gonna refer it to, that I yeah. almost like the yeah. purple. Um, yep. And it's That's exactly it viewing like wherever it wants, like focusing. Mm -hmm. it, it reminds yeah. me of um, a peacock feather almost. <laughs> yes. So it's, yes. Um, they're very, they're very elegant about it. They'll make it like, so like, hey, in your face, but it's like an elegance. We're just watching kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And that's global. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's global. And it's going to be more precise and more, um, you know, mm -hmm. a little bit less in your face mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. And it's not, I'm sorry. Oh no, that's okay. Ah, oh, her inner warrior. Yeah. This is as a result of my trip in China as well, where in that village, <clears throat> pardon me, that village of a million people, uh, again, uh, long story short, I ended up with one other person that was white that could not speak Chinese. I was learning, but it was at that point in time, I hadn't yet downloaded the illegal Google app uh, for translator uh, because for various technical reasons. But anyway, what I found is um, I had, for various reasons, I had very little cash on me. They had, they would not take visa. They, they hadn't heard of visa. You could only pay through their, uh, Facebook equivalent is, is WeChat, which I have, but you have to have a WeChat wallet in order to pay, which because I'm not a Chinese citizen, I wasn't allowed to have. So I had no means of paying for anything. So there I was uh, virtually stranded in this village for a couple of days with very little cash, couldn't speak the language. And it's like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna cope with this? And it's like, you know, and, and you know what? My first reaction was not fear. Perhaps maybe five seconds. I allow myself five seconds of fear. I acknowledge fear and then I say, uh-uh, okay, you've had your time, now it's my turn. And, and it's like, no, I became determined. Well, I had so much fun as a result of this experience. I was in, I can now safely say, I can walk into any Chinese restaurant not know the language, not know the menu. I can order food that I like, food that I know is okay for me to eat and, and, and not have a problem whatsoever, all on my own. Mind you, when I was doing that in China, I've never been videotaped so much in my life um, because it was such an uncommon thing to see in the parts where I was. But um, no, I just, no, I, I just rose to you, I thought, no, no. Yeah, I'm gonna make some some lemonade here. I'm gonna make some real lemonade. You're gonna see what I'm made of. And it's like, boy, I came back on fire. I love that story, and it's so empowering to like you know, just acknowledge, but, like, nope, I don't have to be fearful. Mm -hmm. No. Nope. And yes, I can be amazing. And you know what? Home. I am woman. Hear me roar. You know, <laughs> right? You know, you can yeah, I'm not gonna. Yeah, any woman can. Any woman can. It, that is a universal, universal thing. Any woman can relate to that. And uh, as, and that sold almost immediately. The in fact, the first time I exhibited it, it sold right away. Um, you know, but again, you know, my husband was upset because that was one of his favorite paintings. How dare I? But. <laughs> but now, what can I say? It's got the red, which is passion and mm -hmm. blood and just mm -hmm. like, it does have that black of in, a little bit of fear, but then you have those pinks and those mm -hmm. whites and the texture is what brings it to me because there's scratching, there's mm -hmm. abrasions, there's uh, swiping, there's just like mounds and valleys and yet that pink almost in the center, bottom center, is just so feminine that mm -hmm. like, I'm gonna do this with excellence and with mm -hmm. boldness and 
and grace and grace and i'm gonna have fun while doing it and yes that, that little part of the yellow is like i'm still gonna have some fun oh yeah <laughs> doesn't oh, matter yeah. Cindy Lauper, right? Girls just want to have fun. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> Got to do it. Got to do it. Uh, you may as well just lay down if you're not going to have fun. You know, like life isn't always fun by any stretch. But but if you can find fun, find laughter in 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 whatever it is, then then it can help pick you up. It's not as bad as it could. Like you were saying earlier, it could be mm -hmm. so much worse mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. in perspective. And I'm just going to have to think of it this way. It's going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, the community saw that and wanted it, gobbled it right up. So, yep. yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Last one. And then we'll go. Okay. Screen Fire share. away. Last, last picture. Yeah. Ah. I am what I am. Yeah. Result of China. It's <laughs> like, you know what? Uh, uh, there I was exhibiting among all these other master artists in Beijing in particular, and it was awe-inspiring just to be in their league, to be considered in their league, and it was a museum, and and Koi are very fortunate in, in, in Chinese and Japanese uh, art, so these are my abstract Koi, but you know what, there's a lot of stuff beneath the surface, it's not just what you see, uh, you know, I, I'm very, very much a WYSIWYG person. What you see is what you get. But there's a lot beneath the surface, and you just have to be willing to look and not judge. Not judge. Like, eliminate the judgment. Have questions. Have authentic questions, intelligent questions, um, unoffensive questions. Uh, but it opens oneself up to, yeah, this is, this is who I am. This is what I do. Okay. Let's talk. Let's just talk. Some introspective mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. some inquisitiveness and just really being authentic with yourself. Mm -hmm. it, it's one of those traits that is rare. Um, and once you find it, it's you can't go back to this this fakeness. Um, you just no. gotta know more about yourself. And yes. in in that realm, you're gonna want to more know more know more about others and their true authentic authenticity. Oh, and absolutely. Now that you mentioned the koi, I do see it. I was wondering what was going on with the the orange. So was I at one point. Yeah. <laughs> and um, what what are, what are the dimensions of this painting? This one is a 14 by 14. Yes, it's beautiful. Thank you. I have, I, I, it, it, it's part of a series. I have a large one, I think 30 by 40 um, that I did. And, you know, and it's a, and like anything else, when you do a series, they tend to evolve. Uh, this was the first one though. And it, and, and so, yeah, I, I was really thrilled with it, with the result of this painting. I really, really like it. There is, and I'll have a little confession. Um, I, I like to get a tattoo um, that says, I am that I am, which is why I really like the title. It's like, I am that I, what I am. Mm -hmm. You put um, the comma, which I want to have too. So it's like, I am comma what I am. Has yes. A whole different meaning than I am what comma I am. Yes. That complexity between your two koi fish is just so it's like Pisces in a way, mm -hmm. and it's just like that balance where you're almost like the yin and yang and the darkest yes. light, and you are what you are, and you are also what you are. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. And that's why I absolutely. I'm, a, I'm drawn to this picture and this painting, this creation. It's just very attractive. Thank you. Well, like I said, uh, I was invited to China and they knew what they were getting. Yeah. And, and, right? And, and I am Canadian. I'm a, I'm a proud Canadian. But um, it doesn't mean, and, and doesn't mean you can't have meaningful conversations. And they do truly, and they can bring people together. Yeah you balance your Canadian background and your introduction to their culture so mm -hmm. closely. I love, mm -hmm. I love abstract art and that's why we're gonna close with this one and start talking okay. a little bit about like 
this is more recent stuff, so let's see. Okay. Let's share. All right, now um, let's talk about, these are some of the questions that um, when we talked about that you would mm -hmm. like to like talk about, it's just like something current event, something that's all right to share. And the first thing is the pandemic, of course, the mm -hmm. COVID-19 and all that is encompassed in that, what has helped you get through these times, um, whether it's just expressing art or um, reflecting or more meditation, what has helped you gotten through this, um, this change, this new reality? Um, the first thing I did when we got an inkling of what was happening, which was last December, uh, we had an inkling of what was, and so we're watching very closely. Um, I started cooking. I started filling the freezer with food because that's what I do. And uh, I wanted to make sure, number one, if I were to take ill, in particular myself, um, that my family would be fed, that they can just go to, I didn't have to think about it. Because once you're a wife, once you're a mother, I mean, there's certain mindsets that are hard to get out of your head. That's true. They're impossible to get out of your head. So I, I wanted to make sure that my family was taken care of. So, uh, so I did copious amounts of cooking and freezing. Got that done. Uh, stocked up on hair color. Uh, <laughs> I threw that in. Um, and, then, and then what I did is I, I made sure that business affairs, because we have another business, so we made sure business affairs were in order. I made sure that uh, I've worked from home now for years. So from a technological standpoint, it was not adjust, an adjustment per se. What was an adjustment was Zoom. All of a sudden, oh, I better put on my makeup today, that type of thing. Uh, but you know what I found is through the pandemic, if I'm having a crummy day, I put on my makeup, I make sure my hair is done. I, if nothing else, I do that because I feel better. And then if I'm feeling better, then I'm in a better place to help others, to be more positive to others that may be having a difficult time. I reach out to people, especially, I have a lot of uh, friends uh, that are artists that are single. They're quarantining alone. Yeah. So I reach out to them. I make a point, hey, how are you doing? Uh, you wanna talk, phone. Let's set a time to, to or we'll Zoom or whatever you want, whatever you need, we'll do. And so make a point of just reaching out to those people. Uh, with my family, uh, it, it, you know, if you have a, a family member that says, you know, I'm not comfortable. I'm not comfortable now that we can social distance, all that sort of thing, but I do have family and friends, I'm not comfortable. I respect that. Say, okay, fine. I'm going to give you a virtual hug. I will see you when I see you. Just know that, you know, you're not out of my heart. You're, you're not out of my mind. And so I take the extra effort to, to maybe WhatsApp, again, text, whatever. Uh, just, I find the key thing is to respect other people's needs and help them and listen to what their needs are. Sometimes they just need somebody to listen to for heaven's sakes. They don't want you to try to fix their problems. They just need somebody to listen to. Um, that's what, and, and just follow the guidelines. I, I mean, I was at uh, a gas station pumping gas when this first started uh, before we went into lockdown, a few days before, and they were saying, wear gloves, wear masks, et cetera. I was at a gas station and uh, I had my, my Playtex gloves because you know what? Nothing can break through those. And I disinfect them after each time I pump gas. But you know what? I look goofy. I don't care. It works. But then I saw a gentleman pumping gas with his bare hands. And I said, are you aware that on today's news, we just heard that you, the highest point of infection outside your home is a gas pump? He hadn't heard that news. And I said, so uh, just disinfect because everybody has sanitizers, right? Wherever you go, uh, give them some of my hand sanitizer. Stuff like, like little things. Like, and if they choose not to, that's their choice. But it, it's an informed decision on their part. And I've never had, I've only ever seen one, one person not dealing with me uh, out, out socially, uh, out in a store, you know, not wanting that uh, type of uh, advice from, from a cashier. But um so 
but that's what I try to do. Try to help people. If you see, you see that maybe they're struggling, they're juggling. You, you, know, you see a mother with a couple of kids trying to get through, or somebody carrying their Tim Hortons coffee out of the store. I'll hold the door for them with my hip. You know, because that's why I say, like, that's why women have hips, right? To hold open doors. <laughs> so, so, you know what? And it gets it gets a bit of a chuckle with somebody. They're usually men, by the way, carrying out, you know, like copious amounts of trays and coffees and whatnot, going to, you know, work places of work, whatever. So that's what I do. Almost instinctive and then nurturing. Yeah. Where it's almost like you can't turn a turned eye to someone that's crying out. No. You step over someone that's lying in the street in pain. Yeah. Like, no, like you can't. Nature, almost. Yeah, um, yeah. Especially when you're a healer, so. Well, you know what? Uh, everybody, everybody in life goes through garbage putting it mildly, right? Everybody goes through that. And, it, and it, but it's, what do you do with that garbage? And, 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 and why I don't disclose the illness I have is because I don't want to be, I don't want it to identify me as a human being. I am a Laura Beaton, a visual fine artist who happens to have an illness. That's who I am. And, um, and, and I try my hardest to look at other people the same way. So if you see somebody struggling, you don't want to judge. Everybody judges on some level because that's human nature. But it's like if you recognize that's what you're doing, uh, be it a homeless person, whatever, it's like, okay, wait a minute, step back, uh, you know, uh, put your decency hat back on and think, at least think. Yeah. And if you get to that point where you're thinking, then the rest hopefully will take care of itself. You know? It's like the law of oneness. Um, mm -hmm. Not in me, you are you, but together we are one. Yes, and absolutely, absolutely. You don't yeah. want to cause yeah. more harm and you don't want to inflict any more pain. Um, and that I don't want to get guilt. Huh? No, I'm selfish about it. I'm going to be really upfront about it. I'm selfish about it. I don't want the guilt that I would have if I caused harm to somebody else. I do not want that guilt. I got enough to feel guilty about because of stuff I created. I don't want to create any more nonsense for myself. I don't want the guilt. That's true. Good, good karma. Do you have intuition? Like, can you have, can you see in almost like future events or can you kind of feel like, it coming on the certain emotions when you're talking about I don't want to feel that guilt like you feel that intuition kind of um I I I do believe in 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 like people will call it women's intuition I don't know I think a, a lot of that can also be just reading body language being you know reading body language and and you know, you can tell when somebody's in distress just by looking at them. You can tell if they're uncomfortable. You can just see that pucker factor, right? And so you can tell. So, so you know, you, you just take it in stride and you deal with it when you see it. And, you know, uh, plan for the worst, hope for the best. That's a good principle. Yeah. So how, this is one of the questions that you have, and it says, generally speaking, how can art help with mental well-being? Ah, oh, great question. Especially now because I, I, again, I've heard of so many artists on Facebook, Instagram, uh, all my various art groups. Uh, on the surface, they're exhibiting. On the surface, they're they're doing their Instagram posts, but they they've encountered blocks, artist blocks. They're, they're so stressed out with dealing with teaching kids, educating kids from home, online. Uh, they don't know what end is up, let alone packing lunches for them, let alone getting the groceries to make those lunches for the kids, let alone having their own careers potentially put on hold. There's a lot of nonsense going on in this world. So, so what I say to them, paint anything. Paint Get the idea that you're going to exhibit it. Get the paint. Get the idea that you're going to do a masterpiece right out of your head. Plan to paint garbage. Paint something you never want. Anybody, your, your, your closest friend, friend, husband, lover, whatever, you never want to show it to anybody. Paint that. 
and see what happens and take it and then paint another one or paint over it or do a series of all this ugliness that you or this blockage that you need to get out if you're blocked on a painting get rid of it set it aside i have one painting that it took me three years to complete because of blocks i just didn't know what on earth to do with it and at the end of the day i submitted it for an exhibition with the SUNY artists of canada and it won honorable mention and i'm quite, really if they knew what really went into that painting and the blocks that i and all the nonsense that went into that painting really i was like dumbfounded i was really dumbfounded you never know what's going to come out of you you don't know so so yeah that's what i say about mental art is great and even if you're not an artist get some paper get some crayons get something a pencil just do something and it's amazing it's really cathartic really cathartic art we are visual artists and that can come as writing out your lyrics or playing your instrument and uh -huh. be singing i had someone sing to me the other day and that was her release of um, oh how beautiful um, indian and it was just you could tell like that was her and our ours would be like get it out on paper everything is to put on paper or get mm -hmm. out but mm -hmm. it can't can't be in your vessel um and it has to come out at some point and that's good for the mental mentality mm -hmm. because a lot of anxiety it's like heightened anxiety heightened mm -hmm. fear heightened um insecurities heightened uncertainties and then um just to see something that's that's not related to the outside yeah. come out and you can just say like wow is this what i'm dealing with it's almost like you say sometimes you want to have someone just listen to you it's a sounding board mm -hmm yourself that's important well we've had uh musicians i know throughout um toronto in particular and i i reference that because that's what i see uh where they've gone along the streets and they've handed out or people have had instruments in their homes they've brought, all brought them out onto the streets and they've all played together they've jammed together uh you've had people come out with tambourines or maracas or you know a reed or a clarinet or something uh yeah it can sound pretty pretty awful but you know what again it's cathartic and and you laugh and you have fun and you smile just bang you know bang a pot you know go out there and everybody has pots right in a spoon you get your neighbors lined up in the street and you go out and they say okay we're gonna we're gonna have a like a pot jamming competition and you go go right down the street and then you you see what evolves and, and that alone could alleviate so much stress it's the vibration it's give somebody a headache but oh well you know i honestly sometimes i paint with music sometimes i don't do you have a something in the background um, noise when you paint? Uh, um generally uh because i am a musician as well although i uh i used to play the organ used to teach many years ago mm -hmm. uh if if i paint to music i some i'm somewhat frenetic in that i paint to the rhythm of the music which isn't always a good thing for me. And it's not really been successful. Uh, I've recently been asked by a jazz musician to paint to one of her songs uh, um, and create a piece of music for an upcoming CD, which I've done. And it's not been launched yet, so I can't disclose or show that. But what I did is I listened to the, to the song till I knew the lyrics and I love the song, and and then I created a, a painting based on the song and the lyrics. Can't wait to see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could have used some scotch for that one. I didn't. I ne I, yeah, I didn't do it, but I could have. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's almost like uh, it's it does it does influence the way you paint and work. So yeah, the galleries I have is like based off of music, and you have to listen to the music, and it. Yeah. changes you in a way and mm -hmm. now that you mentioned some things you want to just have a clear clear mind and not yeah. have any thought but sometimes you do want to yeah. have those influential background mm -hmm. yeah um and then if you'd like to just tell us a little bit about more about where we can find you online and i'm going to post right. it in the blog part and in the youtube but if you just All like right. tell us a little bit about where we can find you and your future goals and Anything All right. Else? Yeah. You can. My website is simply laurabeaton.com. 
Instagram is Laura A. Beaton Art, and Facebook is Laura Beaton. Future goals, I, I'm, I've just finished that, that painting for the musician. I've got a number of things on the go uh, online. I'm supposed to be exhibiting in Mexico due to COVID. That's been postponed. That's a Water for Life show that's um, supported by Diego uh, Estate. Uh, his assistant is, is strongly in support of this show, and it brings together international artists. I think 11 different countries are going to be represented. Uh, so, you know, who knows? Uh, it was supposed to be November. Uh, it's going to be post-COVID, whenever that may be. But it gives me more time to create more art, so I'm happy about that. No pressure. It's a very um, good goal, and I have those on your CV, and I will share those with your permission. Some of yes. your events and your background, um, and I, I just really appreciate you taking this time with me, honestly. And if there's any final words, any encouragement, inspiration you like to tell to the world, or just anything that comes into your head, just take that time. Yeah, just be kind to yourself, and just be kind to whoever you meet in your travels and your daily life. Just, just be kind. Kindness will get you a heck of a lot more. I don't know about in the states, but in Canada, say we say you get more, more, uh, more bees with honey than you do bears. And that is true, and that is an idiot, my love. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not so, the bears, it's flies, but it's the same concept. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Well, thank you very much, and yeah. um, this is the sign for I love you. And oh, thank you. Love yeah. You. Did I get it right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm not doing something inappropriate that I'm not aware of. Um, that's you. always that's always my biggest fear, right? But, yeah. You never know until you know. <laughs> Yeah, really. Good yeah. Thank you again. And um, I'm going to feature this and let you know. And I'm going to stop Thank recording you. for the moment. Let's see.